everyone, uh, Dean here. Um, welcome to the Arcade Shot. I'm not someone who's real comfortable in front of the camera, so please bear with me. We'll get through this one way or the other. Uh, it's New Year's Day 2018. Happy New Year, everyone. So um, this is about the machine behind me here. Um, it's a 1963 Bridgeport J-Head vertical mill. Um, I acquired this machine about two years ago um, from a gentleman who had passed away. Uh, his name was John Palmer. And uh, I'll give you a little more of the history of him. And there's actually a couple of videos out there um, showing some of the work that he did. Um, but let's start out by just doing a walk around the machine and I'll show you what it came with and, uh, and then we'll, we'll get back into the history part of it. Alright, so let's walk around the machine here. So it's a step pulley J head. Um, when I got it, it had already been converted to a single phase motor. Uh, the head. Ram, continuing around here. Uh, it was missing uh, the fine feed hand wheel. I've been looking for one. Unfortunately, they're way overpriced. But if I can come by one at a decent price, I'll go ahead and pick one up. The, uh, the light you see here, let me turn it off. It might be easier to see. There we go. Uh, this was actually not part of the machine. It had a different kind of a funky light on there. Uh, but the same gentleman shop had this light hanging in the rafters. And it was really ugly. But, I, but it was cool. So um, uh, I gave him a few bucks for the light as well. And uh, really happy with it. I had to make a bracket that used... I didn't want to drill new holes. So... That's why this bracket looks funny. I was utilizing existing holes. The uh, accessory rack came with the machine. Um, everything you see here with the exception of the ball bearing chuck and the standard chuck in the back there. The all brick came with it. So this vise came with the machine. It, um, I wasn't sure what it was. I thought it was an import. <laughs> It was so filthy and just you know, really ugly. But after cleaning it up, uh, I was able to clean off the label enough to figure out, hey, it's a Kurt. <laughs> it's an older D60. Um, so I was happy to discover that. I, I, thought, I thought it was an import vice. The uh, table is a 36-inch table, which for a home shop, that actually works out pretty good. I also came with this rotary table. It's a 10 inch. It's an import. And John had made this side bracket, which I wasn't going to use it, but I ended up cleaning it up and putting it back on and, and uh, it works out really good. Um, it's kind of, it's a little precarious right now. I've got to, um, I've still got to figure out a way to secure it a little better. Uh, but it's nice because you can drop the table. This table will slide right over and you can slide the uh, rotary table right off onto the mill table you know, without having to lift it. This thing weighs about 90 pounds. Got this, you know, the older machines had this side door. Um, and I'm not sure if they had a, um, a shelf in there or not. I'm, you know, this is my first bridge port, so <laughs> I don't know a lot about them. And then here's the original seller. I don't think they're around anymore. BHS equipment in South San Francisco. And then here was a little goodie in here. So it came with right angle head and the overarm or underarm, I guess, support for the head. So happy to see that. I made a new shelf. I, I got some paper towels in there just to keep things from getting scratched or these end mill holders and there's a, there's a Morris taper adapter um, 
those all came with it. The drill bits I already had. This came from the state sale and the spin dexter. I just, just got that for Christmas. So all these uh, rotary cutters, slitting saws, uh, and so forth. There's a ton of them here. All these came with the machine. I don't know how well we can, you can see here, but there's quite a few in there. Probably more than I'll ever use. And then, sorry, we're handheld here, so sorry about the wiggling and shaking. Uh, these setup blocks, a couple nice V blocks, some angle blocks. Um, these all came with the machine as well. And then here was a nice bonus dividing head. So came with this dividing head. I'm not sure what brand it is. Maybe we'll do a separate video on the dividing head and see if we can, maybe someone out there will know what brand it is. It's a U.S. Um, there's an import chuck on it, but uh, seems to be a pretty nice one. And then it's got the, uh, looks like a shop made uh, tailstock to go with it. Okay, so these storage cabinets did not come with the machine, but everything inside did. Uh, up here in this little one, these are all carbide, various end mills, all types of, all carbide, tons of them. And then everything down below here, just hot and high speed steel. Um, but, I mean, I've got probably a, a lifetime supply of end mills. Just unreal <laughs> how much tooling came with this machine. All varieties and uh, Some large ones, more large ones. Lots of wood drift cutters. Got some mill drills and pointed uh, end mills. A couple arbor saw. Or uh, slitting saw adapters. Okay. This swivel vise was also included. It's an uh, import. I think it's Taiwan. Yeah, made in Taiwan. Um, I haven't done anything with this yet. I, I want to break it down and clean it up and so forth. Um, another project. Hold down hardware. Um, just a mixed bag. More hold down hardware. A lot of it is homemade, shop made. <laughs> Some uh, large bearing rollers that he must have been using for, for uh, standoffs. And then all this came with it. I've got a ton of arbors. I've got the uh, the long arbor for the right angle attachment. Um, some more wheel cutters. Got a handful of gear cutters. More end mill holders. With a saw adapter or a wheel cutter adapter. Some, some other homemade stuff here. Got the original down feed handle. Got some more assortment of, uh, not really arbors, but some drill blanks, pins, some kind of homemade parallels, some other uh, end mill adapter holders, a nice supply of parallels. I still have to go through all these, clean them up. I've got a couple large ones here also. Um, I need to redo this holder tray so I can get to them easier there. It's hard to see what's in there and uh, they're hard to get in and out. 
um, but all those came with the machine and then I've got a, a, a standoff for the vise. Face mill, some fly cutters, uh, various boring bars. The uh, the larger boring head came with the mill. The the smaller one over there was one that I already had um, from a yard sale. It's a, it's a genuine Bridgeport as well, ironically. Okay, let's see what it is. Okay, have a little camera trouble. I'm not sure where that where it cut off at. But um, anyways, um, I acquired this uh, machine from a gentleman named John Palmer who had passed away. And he was a professional, you know, lifelong machinist. Um, and he had a, a really interesting home shop. Um, uh, it was, you know, one of these shops that gets built up over the years, started out as a garage and got added on to. And, Most of the um, items in the shop were, you know, hand-built, uh, shelving and, and uh, benches and so forth. And it's just really interesting, um, just a, a very old school, you know, kind of uh, cobbled together machine shop. Um, and I, I, got, I got a few photos I can throw in um, that, that, in fact, uh, the, um, the main photo on, on, on the channel is a shot of a photo of the shop. So anyway, John Palmer, um, interesting guy. I only met him a couple times. Um, I wish I would have known him longer. Um, unfortunately, you know, that's the way things go sometimes. Uh, he had actually built uh, a couple of Wright Flyer engines. Um, one of them is at the Hiller Aviation Museum, and these are working engines. Um, and I'll put, there's two videos, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put a link in for both of them. One is him actually running the engine, and the other one is um, him and some of his buddies, I'm not sure who they are, but they were, uh, they were at one of the friend's house who had a backyard foundry, if you will, or, or some type of foundry, and they were doing the casting of the block and, and building of the sand molds and so forth. Very interesting. And a bunch of old guys. And let me tell you, these guys know what they're doing. Just amazing to watch. So, um, anyways, um, um, my neighbor and I, I got to know John through my neighbor, through an engine club, but we helped the family, you know, clean up the estate and so forth. So, you know, I got a Worked out a pretty good deal with them on, on getting the mill um, and everything that came with it. Um, the mill was just completely filthy. Um, it uh, I wasn't sure if it was even any good. It did run, <laughs> um, but it was just so dirty and, and and covered with grime and grease and muck and and, and chips everywhere in every every compartment. Um, but actually, it turned out it was a great machine. Uh, I mean, it's got wear, but uh, not that bad. Um, I had to replace a few things. You know, one of the really, uh, the, the table feed nut for the x-axis. I, I put a new feed nut in. Some of the bearings and so forth. Um, but overall, good. Uh, not a bad machine. Um, the waves have wear on them, but for a home shop, they'll be fine. Uh, so, anyways, I. I hope you enjoy the series. Um, so the remaining parts will be just photos of, of the rebuilding and cleaning process. Um, I hesitate to use the word rebuilding; it's more refurbishment. A true rebuild, you know, would have, would have involved rescraping the ways, um, you know, completely going through the spindle um, and so forth. And a lot of that I was able to just leave as it was. Um, so. Anyways, um, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, maybe the, hopefully the, the footage will help somebody doing a similar um, uh, refurbishment, rebuild process. Um, so anyways, we'll, um, I'll probably check in from time to time uh, on the other um, parts as we go. Um, 
probably going to try to keep the narration to a minimum and just do some text comments and so forth. Alrighty.